गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट चैप्टर नंबर थर्टीन फोटो सिंथेसिस इन हायर प्लांट्स यू ऑलरेडी नो अबाउट द प्रोसेस बाय विच प्लांट्स प्रिपेयर देयर ओन फूड इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ सनलाइट यूजिंग वाटर एंड मिनरल्स एब्जॉर्ब्ड बाय द रूट्स फ्रॉम द सॉइल दिस प्रोसेस इज नोन एज फोटो सिंथेसिस दैट अकर्स इन ऑलमोस्ट ऑल प्लांट्स इन दिस चैप्टर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी दिस प्रोसेस अकरिंग इन द हायर प्लांट्स वी विल स्टडी what do we know early experiments where does photosynthesis takes place how many pigments are involved in photosynthesis what is light reaction the electron transport where are the atp and nadph used the c4 pathway photorespiration factors affecting photosynthesis all animals including human beings depend on plants for their food have you ever wondered from where plants get their food green plants in fact have to make or rather synthesize the food that they need and all other organisms depend on them for their needs the green plants make or rather synthesize the food they need through photosynthesis and are therefore called autotrophs you have already learned that autotrophic nutrition is found only in plants and all other organisms that depend on green plants for food are heterotrophs Green plants carry out photosynthesis a physico chemical process by which they use light energy to derive the synthesis of organic compounds like glucose ultimately all living forms on earth depend on sunlight for energy the use of energy from sunlight by plants doing photosynthesis is the basis of life on earth photosynthesis is an important due to two reasons it is the primary source of all food on earth it is also responsible for the release of oxygen into the atmosphere by green plants have you ever thought what would happen if there were no oxygen to breathe we will die this chapter focuses on the structure of the photosynthetic machinery and various reactions that transform light energy into chemical energy what do we know let us try to find out what we already know about photosynthesis some simple experiments you may have done in the earlier classes have shown that chlorophyll a green pigment light and carbon dioxide are required for photosynthesis to occur you may have carried out the experiment to look for starch formation in two leaves a variegated leaf or a leaf that was partially covered with black paper and exposed to light on testing these leaves for the presence of a starch it was clear that photosynthesis occurred only in the green parts of the leaves in presence of light this experiment we have done already in the earlier classes jitna part humne leaf ka cover kiya tha usme starch ki presence show nahi hui thi aur jo open part tha usi mein sirf starch ki preparation hui thi aur wahi par hame iodine dalne se blue color mila tha the next experiment shows that we may have carried out this a part of leaf in a enclosed in a test tube containing some koh soaked cotton while the other half is exposed to air the setup is then placed in light for some time on testing for the presence of starch later in the two parts we have found that the exposed part of leaf tested positive for starch while the portion that was in the test tube was negative this showed that co2 was required for photosynthesis early experiments it is interesting to learn about those simple experiments that led to gradual development in our understanding of photosynthesis first experiment done by joseph priestley in 1770 performed a series of experiments that re revealed the essential role of air in the growth of green plants priestley you may recall discovered oxygen in 1774 priestley observed that a candle burning in a closed space a bell jar soon gets extinguished similarly a mouse would not would suffocate soon. suffocate in a closed space he concluded that a burning candle or an animal that breathed the air both somehow damaged the air but when he placed a mint plant in the same bell jar he found that the mouse stayed alive and the candle continued to burn priestley hypothesized as follows plants restored to the air whatever breathing animals and burning candles remove 
उन्होंने क्या बताया कि कैंडल के बर्न होने से और एनिमल्स के ब्रीद करने से जो भी कुछ डैमेज एयर को पहुंचता है प्लांट्स उसे रीस्टोर कर सकते हैं लेट एस हैव अ लुक ऑन द एक्सपेरिमेंटल सेटअप इन द फर्स्ट जार इज क्लोज कैंडल इज बर्निंग माउस इज अलाइव सून द कैंडल विल बी ऑफ एंड माउस विल बी डेड देन ही प्लेस द प्लांट एंड आफ्टर प्लेसिंग द प्लांट बोथ वर इन द सेम सिचुएशन कैंडल इज स्टिल बर्निंग एंड माउस इज स्टिल अलाइव सो प्रिस्ले कंक्लूडेड दैट प्लांट री स्टोर द एयर कैन यू इमेजिन हाउ प्रिस्ले वुड हैव कंडक्टेड द एक्सपेरिमेंट यूजिंग अ कैंडल एंड अ प्लांट रिमेंबर ही वुड नॉट नीड टू रीकिंडल द कैंडल टू टेस्ट वेदर इट बर्न आफ्टर अ फ्यू डेज हाउ मैनी डिफरेंट वेज कैन यू थिंक ऑफ टू लाइट द कैंडल विदाउट डिस्टर्बिंग द सेटअप using a similar setup as the one used by prestley but by placing it once in the dark and once in the sunlight gen engine house showed that sunlight is essential to the plant processes that somehow purifies the air fouled by the burning candles or breathing animals engine house is an in an elegant experiment with an aquatic plant showed that in bright sunlight small bubbles were formed around the green parts while in dark they didn't later he identified these bubbles to be of oxygen hence he showed that it is the only green part of the plant that could release the oxygen during photosynthesis it was not until about 1854 that julius von seck provided evidence for production of glucose when plants grow glucose is usually stored as a starch his later studies showed that the green substance in plants that is chlorophyll is located in special bodies called chloroplast within the plant cell he found that the green parts in the plant is where glucose is made and that the glucose is usually stored as starch now consider this interesting experiments done by t w angelman using a prism he split light into its spectral components prism pe jab light fall karti hai to ek spectra form hota hai it illuminated green alga cladophora placed in the suspension of aerobic bacteria the bacteria were used to detect the sites of oxygen evolution he observed that bacteria accumulated mainly in the region of blue and red light of the split spectrum a first action spectrum of photosynthesis was just described kya show kiya unhone ki bacteria ki growth jo hai wo blue aur red mein sabse ज्यादा है क्योंकि वहां पर ऑक्सीजन का रिलीज सबसे ज्यादा था ड्यू टू द एल्गा इट रिजेंबल्स रफली द एब्जॉर्बन स्पेक्ट्रा ऑफ क्लोरोफिल ए एंड बी जो कि पिगमेंट क्लोरोफिल का एब्जॉर्बन स्पेक्ट्रा है मतलब क्लोरोफिल उस लाइट को एब्जॉर्ब करते हैं मतलब ये शो कर दिया उन्होंने कि क्लोरोफिल इज द पिगमेंट दैट एब्जॉर्ब द लाइट बाय द मिडल ऑफ द नाइनटीन सेंचुरी द की फीचर्स ऑफ द प्लांट फोटोसिंथेसिस वर नोन namely that plants could use light energy to make carbohydrates from carbon dioxide and water the empirical equation representing the total process of photosynthesis for oxygen evolving organism was then understood as carbon dioxide plus water in presence of light gives ch2o molecules plus oxygen here ch2 represents a carbohydrate that may be a glucose a 6 carbon sugar in that case it will become c6 h12 and o6 that is ch2o n times if glucose is there then it, the n will be equal to 6 a milestone contribution to the understanding of the photosynthesis was made by microbiologist cornelius von neel who based on his studies of purple and green bacteria demonstrated that photosynthesis is essentially a light dependent reaction unhone ye proof kar diya ki without light it is not possible in this reaction hydrogen forms a suitable oxidizable compound reduces carbon dioxide to carbohydrates this can be expressed by twice h2a plus carbon dioxide in presence of light 2a plus ch2o that represents carbohydrate plus water your a can be anything it can be oxygen it can be sulfur 
In green plants, H2O is the hydrogen donor and is oxidized to O2. Some organisms do not release oxygen during photosynthesis. When the H2 donor is H2S instead of hydrogen, uh, in purple and green sulfur bacteria, sulfur or sulfate depending on organisms are there. They do not release oxygen. They release sulfur. Hence, he inferred that oxygen evolved by the green plants come from H2O, not from carbon dioxide. This was later proved by using radioisotopic techniques. The correct equation that would represent the overall process of photosynthesis is, therefore, this is the full and final equation of the photosynthesis. Six molecules of carbon dioxide binds with the 12 molecules of H2O in presence of light and gives C6H12O6 glucose plus six molecules of water plus six molecules of oxygen. Here, the O2 is released from water. This is this was proved by radioisotope techniques in which the radioactive isotope of oxygen was used in order to trace that which oxygen is coming out. Either it is from water or it is from carbon dioxide. Note that this is not a single step procedure. But description of multi-step process called photosynthesis. Can you explain why 12 molecules of water as substrate are used in this equation given above? This we will discuss in the upcoming lecture.